Hello and welcome to Boxer's Shorts. I'm Adam Boxer and I'm a science teacher trying to help you understand more of GCSE science. In these short videos I will try and take difficult concepts from GCSE science, break them down, um, help you understand them and then do some practice questions on those concepts. In terms of some general tips for using these videos, definitely do not have your phone on or anywhere around you. It's a distraction and it means you won't be able to concentrate properly. The same applies for other tabs on your computer. So don't have your social media tabs open on your computer or laptop. It will just distract you. I'm going to ask you to do some questions. If you don't actually do them, you won't actually learn anything. So make sure when I do ask you to do those questions, you do them. And finally, let me know in the comments if there is a topic that you want me to cover. Thanks for listening. And remember, you can subscribe and just let me know if there's something you want me to do for you. All right, today we're going to look at the hydrogen fuel cell. Um, but first, we need to talk about what exactly a fuel cell is. Um, in the last session, where we looked at chemical cells, we looked at how in a chemical reaction, we can do it in a way that enables us to harness uh, the energy released from the reaction. Um, and the word that we like to use there is electrochemically. So it's about trying to trying to take the energy and instead of just used to heat the being sorry instead of that energy being used to heat the surroundings we use that energy to um, power a circuit or to turn a light on or power a motor or something along those lines fuel cells there are things called fuel cells generally uh, they all use things called fuels in a reaction with oxygen what are examples of fuels um, wood is a fuel, methane is a fuel, natural gas, ethane, petrol is a fuel, hydrogen is a fuel. Essentially, it's anything that reacts with oxygen uh, very, very, in a very exothermic fashion. Uh, and it'll make whatever products it makes. Um, so the carbon-based ones, so things like natural gas and petrol, they all produce carbon dioxide and water. Hydrogen is a bit different. Um, but essentially, it's you know the same as what we saw before. So if I have, say, a Bunsen burner, right? My Bunsen burner is uh, letting off a flame like this. That's because into the Bunsen burner is going natural gas. The natural gas reacts with oxygen from the air, and when they react together, heat is produced, or the, you know you see the flame, and that warms things up in its surroundings. It's a very exothermic reaction. What we're doing here, like we saw before, then is instead of allowing that energy to be released as heat, we are harnessing that energy as electricity uh, and that in a nutshell is a fuel cell okay it's now time to look at the hydrogen fuel cell um, and I've got some good news and I've got some bad news the good news is you don't really need to know a huge amount about the hydrogen fuel cell in terms of how it works uh, that's the good news uh, the bad news is that if you do want to know how it works, or you do, uh, if you just want to understand it at all rather than just memorize stuff off by heart that means nothing to you, uh, then you're in for a bit of a long haul. Um, I'm going to try and explain to you exactly what's going on in the hydrogen fuel cell. And again, I'm just trying to give you some background. You don't need to understand every detail to be able to replicate every single detail because in the end, uh, you know, by the time you're done, the only stuff that you actually do need to replicate is fairly straightforward. A hydrogen fuel cell works very simply as a way of harnessing this reaction and the energy that is produced from it. So you start with hydrogen and you react that with oxygen and you get water. Now, if I took hydrogen as a gas and I took some oxygen as a gas and I reacted those together, I just, you know, I just put them in a, in a big box together and I set fire to it, boom, I'd get a really nice big explosion. Uh, lots of energy released um, by heating to the surroundings. Now, obviously, that's not always particularly helpful to me, and I don't necessarily want to be doing big explosions the whole time. So what I want to do is, as we've discussed, find a way to do this reaction and get the electrons to move around in a way that means that I can, um, that I can kind of um, release them, so uh, harness the energy from them, as light or as kinetic energy so when I, if I want to turn a motor in a car or something along those lines it's about harnessing um, so how do we do this there are two different types of hydrogen fuel cell there's an acid 
fuel cell, there's an alkali fuel cell. You don't need to know both, you only need to know one. The one that I'm going to teach you is the alkaline fuel cell. There's no advantage or disadvantage to either of them, that's just the one that I'm going to teach you. And essentially, it's a big box like this, and you put hydrogen in at one side, and you have an electrode over there, and your electrode will be some kind of metal which does not get involved in the reaction. You put oxygen in the other side and in the middle you've got an alkali or alkaline electrolyte. Now because it's an alkali it's got a ton of these in it, OH minus ions floating around and they sort of participate in the reaction. Without them the reaction wouldn't take place, they sort of participate in the reaction. What we're going to see is that electrons are going to be produced over here from this hydrogen. We're going to send them around circuit and I could put say a light over there and they're going to come back down here into this side. Out of my fuel cell I'm going to produce water and I'm also going to be well, I don't need to draw that I'm going to be producing energy because I'm going to see or releasing energy because that's the energy that's driving this light bulb that's turning that light bulb on. That is the broadest outline of the hydrogen fuel cell. Let's make things a bit more complicated. So we start off at one side. I'm going to use I'm going to have to use my whole board for this with hydrogen. The hydrogen reacts with some of that OH minus. The OH minus comes from the electrolyte as discussed and the hydrogen reacts with some of that OH minus to form water. Now that to me does not look, ba look balanced because I've got two hydrogens here, one hydrogen there, but three, sorry, so I've got three hydrogens on this side and only want two on that side, which means if I put two over here I put two over here, that's now balanced. That's now balanced. Except for the fact that it's not quite balanced because I've got a negative charge over here and I don't have any charges over there. Now when we did half equations we looked at how actually electrons can be moving around in all of this process and I'm not going to draw out all the, the full diagrams because it would get just crazy complicated and it just doesn't feel necessary to me. But essentially on this side you've got too many electrons, that's where the negative charge are, you've got loads of electrons, on this side they've got to be there as well. 2e minuses over here, because I've got two OH minuses, each of those, those OH minuses has one extra electron, so if I've got two OH minuses and each OH minus has one electron, I've got two electrons in total, so I'll put them on that side over there. On the other side I have oxygen reacting with water. Where does it get the water from? Oh, there's tons of water here because my alkali is in water, it's a solution, there's loads of water all over the place, so I don't need to worry about where that comes from. These two react together to make OH minus. So let me just draw that along a bit. To make OH minus. All right, how does this help me at all? Well, again, if I've got minus here, I need to have electrons on this side. We'll get to that in a second. Let's balance it first. I've got one, two, three oxygens here and only one over there. If I make that up to three, that'll be three hydrogens here, but I've got two there. So it's got to be multiples of two. So if I put a two over there and a four over there, that's all balanced nice and happy. One, two, three, four oxygens. One, two, three, four hydrogens. One, two, three, four oxygens. One, two, three, four hydrogens. And now, comes the kicker of these electrons. If I've got four OH minuses here, each of those OH minuses has one extra electron, I have to have four E minuses on that side as well. All right, let, let's, let's pause for breath for a minute because I need to explain that I'm doing a lot more in one go than I normally would with you guys. Now I know that these videos are called boxes shorts for a reason because I try to keep them as short as possible, but this is a process that doesn't make sense unless we take the whole thing in its entirety. And that's what I'm trying to achieve here. Now you see these electrons here, the oxygen and the water are gonna be gaining those electrons. 
Where do those electrons come from? They come from here. So the hydrogen releases those electrons. The hydrogen and the hydroxide together, the OH- together, releases those electrons. Those electrons then are what go through my external circuit and come back down over there. So the electrons go up here, across there, meanwhile producing some light, down, across here, and then down to here. But if I've got two here and four here, that doesn't really make that much sense. So what I need to do is I need to increase that here to four, and I need to double everything. Make that four, make that four, make that two. So that equation stays balanced in a sense, because I've got four hydrogens here, four hydrogens here, eight hydrogens here, four oxygens here, four oxygens here, four minus charges on this side, four minus charges on that side. That's now happy and balanced. This OH minus here gets recycled and goes over there. So the OH minus from here comes down, goes through the cell. Remember the electrolyte was OH minus, so this OH minus travels through the electrolyte and it goes over there. So overall, there's no change in the amount of OH minus. It gets used up here, but then produced over there. In turn then, I've got water going on here. I've got four bits of water being produced here and two bits of water being used there. So minusing two H2O. This side, I can use all of the OH minus, but this side, I can only use two of the H2Os. So I'm producing four, but I'm only using two, which leaves me left over with, of course, two H2Os left over. So I've got two H2Os left over. My electrons, they're all used up. So the electrons get produced here and um, they get produced here and used as they go through the circuit and then reacted or combined over here. So the electrons are all happy, which leaves me just with the hydrogen from here and the oxygen from there, which I've not accounted for yet. This hydrogen is my fuel. So I have to apply that from the outside. I get a can of hydrogen and I pump that into my fuel cell. There's two of them. My oxygen over here, O2, comes from the air and overall they're reacting together to make 2H2O, which is the equation that I gave you a few minutes ago as the overall reaction going on here. So the overall reaction is this, exactly the same as a combustion reaction, just instead of it blowing up and getting fire all over the place, I'm getting those electrons to move around and generate electricity for me. In terms of what you need to know in this fuel cell, you don't need to be able to like construct and explain this whole process, but you do need to know this and this off by heart. You do need to know these two half equations because it will ask you to produce those half equations. Um, in Sorry, it will ask you to produce those half equations in your exam. So like I said, the only thing that you actually really need to know off by heart is that this is the overall reaction and these two are the half equations involved in the alkaline fuel cell. Uh, you will often, sorry, often get asked to um, evaluate the use of hydrogen fuel cells. You need to know some advantages and disadvantages of the hydrogen fuel cell. Um, the advantage, the major advantage to them is that they only produce water. So every other type of, you know, fuel cell that uses methane or you know, if you have a car that has a petrol engine, then it's going to be producing carbon dioxide, um, which is not particularly good for the environment because it's a greenhouse gas that leads to global, global warming that leads to climate change. Uh, and you'll learn more about that in the atmosphere unit in paper two. Um, so that's one advantage that produces only water. Uh, another advantage is that we need to get this H2 from somewhere. But if we can, and if we can get that H2 from renewable sources, uh, then, of course, we again end up removing any uh, problem of using non-renewable resources. And again, you'll learn more about that in the atmosphere unit. Uh, on the flip side, there are some disadvantages to the hydrogen fuel cell, which is that normally, quite often, the hydrogen is um, extracted using methods that are 
not renewable so if you use a fossil fuel to do electrolysis to get hydrogen well, that doesn't really help you with that much another problem is that it's really really difficult to store it's a gas at room temperature which is very hard to store you have to pump canisters you have basically you have to get really pressurized canisters or have it as a liquid very complicated not easy to achieve uh, and there's no infrastructure for that so you can't like drive to a petrol station and be like yo can i have some hydrogen it just doesn't work it's not a thing um, and then the final disadvantage is that hydrogen is flammable, which means that if there's a leak and someone lights a match or a cigarette lighter somewhere in the area, you can have quite the explosion. So there you have some advantages and some disadvantages. All right, so a typical question on this might look a bit like what's in front of you now. Um, they like to extend a response. Um, questions on this which are what we used to call six markers there were six marks you need to express yourself very clearly very logically um, you don't need to worry too much about like your grammar and how flowery your presentation is and I actually always encourage my students to do um, these in bullet points but well, you know what they might do is give you a t data table like this comparing two things a hydrogen fuel cell with either a with a battery or with a methane fuel cell or with a petrol engine something along those lines they ask you then to evaluate one next to the other uh, but you do need to use the table and your own knowledge. So you need to talk about what's in the table. That'll get you a few marks for sure. Uh, for saying, for example, that the hydrogen is much quicker in refueling and can travel much further, but you get less energy. Um, uh, yeah, so you get less distance for the same amount of energy um, or blah, 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 or it's much more expensive to recharge, uh, to, ref sorry, to refuel, or it's much more expensive to start with as a car. But then you'll also need to make points from your own knowledge about the hydrogen fuel cell and about how the, we get the hydrogen from renewable sources or non-renewable sources, about how um, the only product is water, which is a good thing, about how uh, lithium ion batteries, for example, can be difficult to dispose of because they can leak toxic chemicals. Uh, they also have a limited lifespan, so lithium ion batteries, they don't last forever. Um, things along those lines, you'll also want to write like what we said before about how hydrogen um, can be flammable or explosive. So in the mark scheme, they'll say something, they'll have points all along like this. So again, they're looking for advantages, or sorry, not advantages, disadvantages, but it's about judging one as better than the other. Things from the table, things from your own knowledge. Once you've had a read of that, um, you should pause. Uh, and then once you've read it, just play again. And then you'd need to finish off your answer with an evaluation. You need to say, overall, I think that X or Y is better because blah, blah, blah. So it says there in the question, evaluate. So that's what they're telling you, that you need to form some kind of judgment at the end. That concludes our unit on energy changes, including for the triple scientists, the separate scientists. I hope you've enjoyed. I hope you feel like you've learned something. I hope you've actually learned something. And a reminder, please, to subscribe for more videos and let me know if um, there's any particular topic that you want me to cover.